Are you ready to learn an easy way to make text animations for your website? Are you ready to talk about GSAP and GSAP's text plugin? Let's get right into it. So to get started, I'm here in VS Code. And as you can see, I've already got an index.html, styles.css, and app.js files set up and ready to go. Now in index.html, let's use the Emmet shortcut to quickly create some HTML boilerplate. Then before the closing body tag, let's create a script tag. And we're going to set its source to our very own app.js file. And that's where we're going to be writing our custom code. Let's now go ahead and grab the GSAP library and GSAP text plugin. So I'm here in the GSAP installation page, and I'm going to scroll down to about the halfway point. And we're going to go ahead and click the CDN link. And we just want to click on the text plugin. And here you can see it gives us the script tag for both the GSAP core library as well as the text plugin. So let's click this little copy icon. We'll come back into VS Code. And before the script tag for our custom app.js file, let's paste those GSAP links. The next thing that we want to do is come into our app.js file and register the text plugin. GSAP dot register plugin text plugin. And this register plugin method ensures that the GSAP core library as well as whatever plugins we're using work seamlessly together. Let's look at the most basic usage of this text plugin. Now here in my index.html file, I've already gone ahead and created an H1 tag with the Spice Girls as the text content. And if you've been watching the channel, you already know that the Spice Girls is my very favorite girl group. I've also given this H1 tag an ID of Spice, and that's so that we can target it in our app.js file. So let's go into app.js. And here on line three, I'm getting this H1 element with the ID of Spice and assigning it to a const of Spice. And here's the fun part where we get to use GSAP. GSAP.2 is a method that allows us to create a tween or animation. The first element to GSAP.2 is going to be this spice element, which is the element that we want to animate. Now the second argument is an object, and in this object we're setting a duration of two, so that's two seconds, and we're also setting a text property here. So we want to take the text, the Spice Girls, from our index.html and transform it into the code creative. Let's go into the browser and see this in action. So we'll start with the Spice Girls, and you can see it transform into the code creative. Now, this is pretty good, you might say, but how about if we want to do like a classic typewriter effect? Well, let's go back into index.html, and inside of our h1 tag, Let's just leave the text content blank. Wow. So now we're going to kind of be animating from nothing to the code creative. Let's go back to the browser and I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see now that the letters are laid out nicely in succession. I think it's time to spice things up a little bit. Let's go back into app.js and take a look at some of the more advanced features of this text plugin. If we want access to some of those features, instead of setting text to a basic string like this, we're going to instead turn it into an object, because in that object we can have multiple properties and values. Speaking of value, the actual text string that we want to use is going to be the value property. So let's put the code creative back. And another thing we can do in this object is define a delimiter. So a delimiter is something that separates different pieces of data. And so in this string, the code creative, we have these spaces here and here. And those spaces are separating the words. So if we use the delimiter property, if we set that to be a string with a space character, well, now the animation is going to occur word by word rather than letter by letter. So let's save that and let's take a look at it. Right, so you see one, two, three. So that's a nice little convenience feature of this plugin. Now, just in case you thought I had no class, I'm gonna show you two properties, old class and new class. And you can get some really cool effects by using these. To start off with, I'm going to comment out the delimiter line, and I'm gonna start with old class. 
So this is going to be the string of a class name that you want to be applied at the start of the animation. So let's call this start. And then let's also do new class. And we'll call this end because this will represent the new class that the animation transitions to. So of course, at the moment, these aren't going to do anything because we need to actually set up these classes in our styles.css file. And before we do that, I forgot to create a link to that styles.css file. So let's just do that right now. So now in styles.css, let's actually make a class for start. And we'll just say its text color is going to be black. And we'll do the one for end. And we'll say for this one, it's going to be red. And the other thing I want to do is come back into index.html and put that text content back in the H1 because I want to be able to see the transition from the old class to the new class. All right, now let's go into the browser and let's refresh. And there you can see black transitioning into red. And then in the CSS, maybe let's try also changing the font size. So we'll start with 16 pixels. And then here in the end class, we'll double it to 32 pixels. And let's check that out. That's pretty cool. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.